Hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to the series called RBI 24/7. So as most of you would be knowing that in this series we try to discuss some concepts related to finance and economics current affairs that can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams. So guys, here we are going to discuss five questions, but before moving on to those questions, first I would like to ask you that if you are a new entrant here do subscribe to our channel subscribing to our channel can help you in getting access to a lot of good content and after that don't forget to press this bell ka icon which is flashing on the screen it can help you to stay in touch with us and get notifications regarding every update that comes up right after that do not forget to join our telegram group on this group you can ask all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible right so are you ready for your question number 1 so here is your question number 1 for today i hope the screen is perfectly visible to you and this this question says recently rbi has asked banks to complete the automation of something by 30th june 2021 so a very simple question let's see who gives the correct answer to this question moving ahead to the solution and the solution is b that means rbi has asked banks to complete the automation of a process called recognition of bad loans so it's a very simple process so uh, it's it's very simple to understand that what is recognition of bad loans if you are an avid reader and you read newspaper daily you must be reading lots of articles about this uh uh this problem of banks whether they should recognize the non performing assets or not so recognition of bad loans it simply means dividing their assets so what major assets does a bank have loans that it lends to various borrowers be, be it individual borrowers or be it corporate borrowers so dividing these loans into two category that whether they are bad or they are good so what is meant by a bad loan a bad loan is a a borrower which who is not going to pay the money back which is which it has taken on loan right so you can uh, you can simply imagine it as a process of classifying your friends that if you have lent money to a lot of your friends then you know who is going to pay you back and who is not going to pay you back and considering that money as your treat right so moving ahead here you can see the solution processes for npa identification income recognition that what income will accrue to banks from these assets provisioning making provisions on these assets so we have discussed it many a times in our sessions that banks they have to make provision on their assets that if any of their loan or asset turns bad they have money set aside for the covering those losses just as i told you if you know that some of your friend is not going to pay your money back you just save some money out of your pocket money so that you can cover for that loss right so that is what provisioning is obviously banks may banks have to make a a, way, a really higher amount of provisions for bad assets as compared to their good assets right so rbi has been noticing that banks are still engaged in manual identification manual identification means that identification of npas by the discretion of their employees rather than being automated or rather than being done by softwares or machines who, uh, who are equipped for it right so these all processes this this classification or this bifurcation of assets should be done with the help of machines which are appropriate for this job right you can see here overriding the system generation because there are chances of asset in manual identification which are very less as compared to if done by machines in which so all the information about all the accounts catering to different sizes of borrowers different um, loans extended to different sectors be it power sector be it telecom sector shall be covered in the automated automated it based system for asset classification and provisioning processes so there is one thing also that this 
uh, this software or this this uh, this mechanism for classifying the assets into good or bad it should have it should have a system of upgrading or downgrading the asset right if the quality of asset changes if a bad loan pays up or if a good loan turns into a bad one there should be appropriate mechanisms for this type of classifications so they have allowed manual intervention in some exceptional circumstance where it is not possible to do, do the job by the, with the help of machines and there should be some level of authorization that means this manual intervention this this job being done by an employee should be cross checked so that there are very less errors or preferably no error right such intervention should be subjected to audit so this is very important that this manual intervention this should be cross checked by the process of audit so that it can be checked right moving ahead to the next question for today here you can see this question says from the below mentioned statement, select the correct statement about FAL LCR. So this topic has been mentioned by one of you in the comments. I hope you see this question and your concepts get clear regarding this question. So five statements that tell you about FAL LCR, right? Moving ahead to the solution for this question. Here is the solution which says that the correct option is D. What is D? Just a second, right? So, the option D, it says that FAL LCR is that part of GSEX, that is government securities, under SLR that can be pledged to raise liquid assets to meet LCR requirement under the Basel, under the Basel 3 norms, right? So, guys, see, here we are going to discuss it from the starting. First of all, you have to understand that banks they invest in government securities and why do they do so because they want some of their money to be invested into safer assets and what uh, what better than government securities if you want safe assets right so i hope we all know the meaning of slr statutory liquidity ratio so i think you can guess from its name that it has something to do with liquidity maintained by banks. So this is a certain amount that RBI requires banks to invest in safe assets so that they do not put all their money in some risky assets, right? So SLR is one requirement. After that one requirement that banks have, the other requirement that banks have to fulfill is LCR, that is liquidity coverage ratio. So guys see, banks have to fulfill two criteria. First, fulfilling having the minimum amount of money invested into safe assets that is government securities under SLR and then meeting the liquidity requirement under LCR. So these two terms have been uh, discussed in detail in, in our previous sessions. If you want the link for that not clear with the, these terms, you can ask for that video's link. I think that can be really helpful for you right so now if banks have to maintain or banks have to fulfill both of the requirements liquidity requirements there is a huge pressure on bank right because they have to fulfill both the requirements now due to this pressure they might not be able to lend properly because see under slr also they have to put some money into safer securities and for liquidity coverage ratio also here you can see the definition of LCR. It was introduced under Basel III norms and effectively brought in second parallel liquidity requirements in India. So you can see that it is a second parallel. India already had a liquidity requirement for banks. LCR means that banks have to maintain this much. Uh, banks have to maintain a a number of assets or an amount of assets in liquid form in liquid form means which can easily be converted into cash for an amount which is equal to their next 30 days cash outflow requirements whatever payments they have to make in one month they should have an equivalent amount invested into some liquid assets that is what is the requirement under lc are. Now you see that if banks have to follow these two norms, there is more pressure and that is why to reduce this pressure, this FAL LCR works. 
and what is this see this fal lcr it says that banks can use some of the as you can see here in this statement see that part of government securities under slr so if banks already have some government securities invested for for fulfilling the requirement of slr they need not have some extra for lcr but they can use this under lcr also so you see that for fulfilling lcr they do not have to make new investments but they can use some of proportion of gsex which have been invested under lc which have been invested to fulfill slr right so very simple two requirements and uh, the the investment under one is allowed to be used as an investment under the other one right so this fal lcr is that proportion which is allowed to be used in both right so last year government increased this amount as a measure to help to help banks so that uh, the pressure on them can be reduced and they can lend more as you can see here the assets allowed as level 1 hqla that is high quality liquid assets for the purpose of computing lcr include so what banks have to include what banks can include under the calculation of lcr first of all government securities in excess of whatever they have uh, whatever amount of government securities they have after they have fulfilled the slr requirement that they can use for putting under liquidity coverage ratio or for putting under the calculation of lcr and apart from that whatever extent that they have used under slr they can use a proportion of that too which is called fal lcr and after that marginal standing facility whatever this is this is usually a percentage of ndtl that is net demand and time liabilities of bank so that percentage banks can also use right so i hope now you understand the meaning of this term moving ahead to the next question for today and here is your next question which says dash refers to certain online lending that relies on innovative financial technology or fintech to connect individuals and institutional borrowers with lenders right a very simple question let's see what the correct option for this question is and the correct option is option a c option a says marketplace lending so guys this is a very simple term which has been in use for quite some time now it says that marketplace lending simply means a, an intermediary which connects borrowers to lenders and it is specifically for the purpose of allowing individuals to raise loans and small businesses so you can compare it to b2b lending what is sorry p2p lending what is what is p2p lending peer to peer lending but the difference uh, the slight difference sometimes these two terms marketplace lending and p2p lending they can be used synonymously but there is a slight difference that marketplace lending also includes small businesses and institutions whereas p2p lending is basically for the individual so a platform which allows borrowers to connect with lenders and lenders to borrowers is known as this mechanism this system is known as marketplace lending right here you can see so basically marketplace lending that has been uh, classified or that has been described with the help of three features first of all it is not a bank a non bank entity working in such field is is said to be uh, a market marketplace lender apart from that they rely heavily on technology they make use of technology they do not have a physical structure like bank but they have online presence as you can see here they use technology to streamline simplify and speed up the lending processes that make technology the defining characteristic of marketplace lending right and since they are operating entirely online the costs are low and they are uh, they are 
they are able to provide that low cost benefit to their clients as well after that process of getting started with taking out a loan may take very less time as compared to a traditional bank so if you want to go to a bank and take a loan that might take a lot of time because of huge size of bank it might require um, many documentation processes that have to be fulfilled and many other formalities right so this marketplace lending takes lesser time after that serves a two sided market a two sided market means that it caters to needs of both borrowers and lenders by connecting them to each other right at the core marketplace lending connect consumers with investors as just, as i just told you and that is why it is said to be a two sided market place and see they can also be used by borrowers who do not have a very great credit history as you can see here by used by thin credit profile or sub prime super prime borrowers who are usually not very well off right and the option of traditional banking going to banks might not and taking loans from there might not be available to them that is why they can turn to this marketplace lending and here these borrowers they can get appropriately priced products and investors are getting a competitive financial return so the the people who are lending the money they are getting a return a good interest rate because the credit history of borrowers is not very strong right moving ahead to the next question for today here is a next question which says complete the following blanks by putting in correct type of economic indicators so here three statements given to you you have to match this op these options with the statements mentioned here right so let's see what the correct option is and the correct option is e e means leading lagging and coincident right so a leading indicator is one that looks to future possible events or tells you about or gives you an indication about what is going to happen in future after that lagging indicator a lagging indicator is one which confirms a certain pattern see this lagging indicator it works on past data something that has already happened it it is it is not going to tell you what is going to be in future but it is going to tell you okay this has happened in future and this is the meaning of this particular event right we are going to discuss the examples don't worry after that the last comes coincident indicator so coincident means an indicator which gives you real time information like when it when the event is happening it is going to give you information about it now let us look at them in a little bit of detail as you can see here heads up for economists and investors who hope to anticipate trends that what is going to happen in future we are talking about leading so the examples are one example is bond yield and new housing starts so if you see construction work around you getting started um new houses being built then you can have an indication okay good time is going to come for the economy because construction work has started and that means pe people are buying houses and investing into real estate right so do you see how they give you information about future same goes for bond yields if they are high or low they give us information that what is going to be the lending sentiment in future right after that lagging lagging means that can only be known after the event uh, based on past data clarify or confirm a pattern that is accruing over time for example unemployment rate so whatever the unemployment rate was uh, there in uh, january or february that is pre covid times comparing it to the uh, outbreak of covid in march and after that comparing it to the the highest the stringency lockdown period like may and after that comparing it to a time where lockdown has gradually reduced like comparing it to july or august right so do you see we are comparing the past data and then it tells you that okay what what has happened in the economy in this past few months or whatever period you are taking the data for after that coincident the example is personal income and 
GDP. So tells you that what is currently going on in the economy, right? So as we know that GDP has contracted a lot. This has been in news in uh, for past few months. Oh, sorry, uh, this has been in news for past few days, right? So analyzed and used as they occur in real time, right? So moving ahead to the last question for today, and here is the last question, which says Dash is a hybrid. of debt and equity financing that gives the lender the right to convert into equity interest in a company in case of a default so very easy question if there is a debt holder and that debt holder is facing some default and it and that debt holder has an option to convert into equity then what uh, what is the type of financing involved here and the correct option for this question is a mezzanine financing let us learn a little bit about mezzanine financing it's a way for companies to raise funds for specific projects or to aid with an acquisition through a hybrid of debt and equity so sometimes if the company is not having a very great credit history then they can resort to this mezzanine financing where they can provide the uh, the lenders or the bond holders the the people who are going to subscribe to their debt they can provide them with higher rates of return and uh, and lower them with that higher rate of return right and why would they try it? why would they invest into a company which is not having a great credit history because if they make a default if the bond holder is not able to get their money back they might convert it to equity and if the company has good growth prospects then it might be beneficial for the investor right so they are providing an option of conversion to equity in case of any default that is known as mezzanine financing as you can see bridges so it is a hybrid of debt and equity bridges the gap between debt and equity financing and one of the highest risk forms of debt why because why do you think it is the highest risk forms of debt because see it is providing you higher rate of return and company is not very credit worthy so that is why a risky form of debt but you can say that it lies below to the equity see you can see here it is senior to pure equity but subordinate to pure debt that means when in case of a default if the bonds they get converted into equity then these type of holders they are going to be paid after pure debt that means other bond holders who do not have the option of conversion has been paid so firstly bond holders are going to be paid after that these converted holders are going to be paid who subscribe to this mezzanine financing and after that equity is equity holders equity shareholders are going to be paid something in case of liquidation right so that is why it is said that these uh, holders they are senior to equity because they are going to be paid before equity holder holders but subordinate to debt holders right and provides higher rate of return as i just told you and it can be structured as fixed and variable part interest so it is possible that it might provide some fixed interest that let's say they are telling okay we are going to provide a 5% interest rate plus x percent and this x can be linked to any indicator in the market let's say uh, yield on treasury bonds right so they can have one variable component and one fixed component right okay So guys these were the five questions for today I hope you learned something new from this video and if you did then don't forget to give us a thumbs up because I'll be back tomorrow with new set of information that can be useful for you till then take care of yourself and keep your studies going on and I'll see you tomorrow thank you for being here